Joining me now is Kevin Donovan, the lead investigator on the Sherman story for the Toronto Star and the author of The Billionaire Murders. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me on. Can you tell us, is there more to come from what happened Friday? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, there are uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of documents that are still completely sealed. Uh, every six months, I've gone to court to, uh, to try and get them unsealed, uh, and I argued the case myself on behalf of, of the Star. And uh, last December, a, a lot was unsealed. Justice Leslie Pringle, who is the one who, who, who authorized the warrants and sealed them, it's up to her to decide, and she'll make her decision in the next week whether or not she will release more. If not, I'll be uh, continue investigating other ways and I'll be back in court in six months. You had several theories in your book and in your writing, international hit team, local people or business um, reason, uh, business deal gone bad. Do you think this has anything to do with anti-Semitism or terrorism? I don't think so. It's not something that, that uh, I mean, the, the theories that I have in, in, in the book are, are theories that people have come out with. One of them is the Clinton Foundation is somehow involved. Uh, and people say that because Barry Sherman donated some money to, uh, uh, or some drugs to, uh, to help out a, a relief effort the Clinton Foundation was involved in. And, and you know, people like to just spin all these uh, silly theories on the internet. Uh, so I, I, no, I don't think it's anti-Semitism. I don't think there's any hallmarks of, of that sort of, of crime. Uh, and uh, I, I personally don't think it's, it's business. I think it's, uh, it's, it's something else is, is how I would put it. What should Canadians take away from the fact that it's taken such a long time and we're still asking questions and they haven't caught the killers? In my opinion, the investigation had a, a lot of flaws in it at the start, a, a, an incredible number of flaws. And I think they've been playing catch up ever since, uh, you know, in a murder investigation, uh, uh, time is of the essence. And I think they really uh, missed, uh, missed the boat in a lot of ways. I'm still learning information. And I think the police, uh, I think the police would be bet, would be well advised to go in and re-interview people. Why they don't, they're not telling me. And what has your relationship been since you started doing this with the Jewish community? How do they feel about it? My main contact are with all the very close friends uh, of Barry and Honey Sherman and some family members, and they've been very positive. I, I haven't had anybody say, uh, you know, stop doing what you're doing. I, I keep in very close contact with, with really close friends of the Shermans, and 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 I've learned a lot from them. They're they're all just super nice people. And I often talk uh, about my experiences with my wife, who's uh, who's quite interested in this case. And and what I often talk about is just uh, the interesting lives that all these people have, and how upset they are uh, that the case is unsolved and that they miss uh, Barry and Honey. I, I never knew Barry and Honey. I really grew to like them through the reporting, and I hope that shows in the book. Uh, they've, I think a lot of media and people in uh, the commu various communities have, have not treated them very well. You know, I'll get people who call up and say, oh, they're just terrible. And I, and I don't believe that's the case. I think they're eccentric. I think they knew how to drive a hard bargain. And uh, I think they're nice people. Kevin, thank you so much for sharing this with us today. Thanks for having me on. 